football. Yes, gang. Welcome back to League of Irish Ball with me, Jack Sabini. Um, after the FAI Cup final, which was a, a cracking game to be out, a fantastic day out, thoroughly enjoyed. Um, I thought I'd do the video on the back of uh, the Cup final and include that as part of the team of the year from the Premier Division. Apologies if you hear lots of noise around the place. Um, I am doing I know I come across super, super professional. Like, unbelievably professional. But uh, I am doing this in my house, believe it or not. So, um, in my kitchen. So, uh, apologies for any noises that you may hear, dishwasher and the likes, maybe even the dog. Um, so, apologies for that. But anyway, let's get on with my team of the year. So, in goal is the best place to start, I'd say. Um, now, this could have easily have gone to Connor Kearns of Shells or Dean Linus of St. Pat's. Both had stellar seasons. I know Linus only come in halfway through, but he's been fantastic since he's been there and obviously now he's a, he's a medal winner. But I've gone for Brian Meyer of uh, Derry City. Um, he's had the most clean sheets um, in the division this season and he's contributed greatly to Derry's second place finish. He kept a clean sheet in each of his last five games as well. Um, let's move on to left back. Uh, again, could have gone to a numerous amount of players, but I think it would have been very harsh to leave out Ben Doherty. Now, I know some of you are going to say it's not Doherty, and I apologise in advance, but that's just the way my accent takes it. So it's going to be Doherty for now. I know it's probably Doherty or the likes, but I'm going to run with Ben Doherty, I'm afraid to tell you. Um, I call him Ben. Just, just to be on the safe side. So Ben, he's a very versatile player. He can play on either side. And he can either play as fullback or wing. Um, and with five goals and ten assists, playing mainly as a left-back this season, it's very hard to leave this guy out. He's fully deserved in there. So Ben Doherty, in your go. So the centre-half partnership. Now, um, you could have picked either or for both of these clubs because they've, they've been huge contributors to their successful seasons. Um, but we've gone with Pico Lopez of Shamrock Rovers and Gavin Malloy of uh, Shelburne. Now you could have gone with Paddy Baxter and you could have gone with Lee Grace. But these two, I think, are the standout players at the back line for these clubs. Um, again, there's other players that have missed out as well. So you could have gone with Joe Redman of Pats. He's, uh, he's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, Cameron McYannett of Derry City as well. He's been brilliant. The, the skipper at centre-half, he's been brilliant. But I've gone with these two. Um, Pico Lopez, let's start with him. He's been at the heart of the back line for Rovers this season. Um, a large part of why they won the title was due to their stability at the back and also due to the fact that uh, Pico has actually contributed with a few goals himself. Um, they're very dangerous from set pieces, Shamrock Rovers, and Pico Lopez has been at the heart of that. Gavin Malloy then. Um, I spoke about him in, in the game between Shells and Dundalk at Tolker early in this season in the um, match day vlog that I done. Uh, Gavin Malloy, uh, he's been absolutely fantastic and he's adapted perfectly to centre half as well, originally being a centre mid. Uh, and at the age of 21, he's plenty more to offer. So, centre halves, Pico Lopez and Gavin Malloy. Let's move on to right back. Again, another one of those positions where numerous players could have been in there. Um, Archie Davis has been absolutely fantastic this season. Uh, he's up there in the assist records anyway. He's been brilliant for Dundalk. In a struggling Dundalk team this season, I must add as well. But it'd be hard to leave this youngster out. It's Sam Curtis at right back. Um, at 17, I mean, pff, what an unbelievable prospect we've got in our hands here. Uh, not just for the League of Ireland, I might say, but for the national side too. I mean, there's absolutely no way you can leave this lad out. Um, Sam Curtis makes it in at right back. So in this team, I'm playing a 4-2-3-1. Um, and the first centre mid I'm going to be putting in there, which would be no surprise, is Chris Forrester. Um, one of the best players in the division. Um, he, everything he does is absolute class. Um I don't think there's a better touch um, in the division. His goal against Strada this season speaks volumes. Um, what an absolute unbelievable finish that is. Um, he's also Pat's top scorer from midfield and he's only two away from being the top scorer in the league. That's why Chris Forrester makes it in. Now, the second centre mid... Um, may come as a bit of a surprise to some of you based off what I see in my own eyes is Sadu Diallo he's been absolutely solid for Derry this season now he's not got any goals or assists but he's been at the heart of a lot of what they do 
Uh, he sits deep in midfield. He dictates the pace of the game. He wins the ball back. I mean, I think this fella's mustard. I really do. I've watched him live a few times. Um, and the game that sticks out for me is the game uh, at the Brandywell for the title challenge um, versus Shamrock Rovers. They're not only, obviously, Shamrock Rovers. I mean, their class goes without saying. But their midfield in particular, Shamrock Rovers, is formidable. I mean, you've got Gary O'Neill. You've got... Ronan Finn, uh, you, you've had Poon playing there as well. He's been brilliant. I mean, you've got many a player who plays centre mid, Shamrock Rovers, that have been brilliant this season. And he absolutely bossed that game. Uh, he dictated the pace. He was he was absolute class. And I've seen him as well, uh, bows away and the likes. Brilliant player. Uh, he allows Patchen to get forward and do his thing. Patchen's obviously been brilliant as well. Uh, but he allows him to get forward and do his thing. He's protected the back line in a team that has kept the most clean sheets this season. And that's why Sadu Diallo is the surprise inclusion for me. We're going to go from left to right, up top as well. Well, behind the forward. And you can't leave out what who I think has been the best player for the title win inside this season is Rory Gaffney. Um, there's lots of competitions for this spot on this left-hand side of the team this season. You've got Michael Duffy, you've got Mark Doyle uh, with their con contributions towards the end of the season. But you can't leave out the title winner's best best player this season. Um, you, his experience is, you can see it in every single game, his touch, his strength, his stamina, close ball control. I mean, he's been absolutely top draw. And Rovers will be absolutely delighted that he's extended his stay. So Rory Gaffney, you make my team of the season. Let's move into the middle. Now, he's only had half a season. Uh, he was signed in the summer uh, when Shells had that takeover bid. And there's a big reason why he's in this team for me. It's Harry Wood. The impact this guy's had for, for Duffer's side is I don't think you can question the impact he's had. I'm not sure Shells would have actually made Europe if they didn't make this signing. Duff, obviously, as we know, is a defensive-minded coach probably playing under Mourinho will give him that kind of inspiration but he, he sets up his teams not to be beaten and it's obviously worked wonders from this season but they didn't at the beginning of the season you, you probably remember they were behind Bowser behind Dundalk there were, were there were talks of Europe but it didn't really look likely at that time I mean drawing at home to Sligo and the likes um, at the beginning of the season you would have probably said they wouldn't have made it but they were doing well but Harry Wood coming into that side given that creative outlet he was on set piece duty He's helped Jack Moylan get up the charts in terms of scoring goals. I mean, he's been absolutely fantastic. So Harry Wood, he's got to make the team for me. Let's move on to the right. So I think this guy's been the best player in the division this season for me. It's Jack Moylan. Um, he's a real nuisance. He's a type of player that I absolutely love. He's going to get at the back line. He's going to make it. He's going. To, he's just going to. He's going to torment them. Is what I would say. He's got pace. He's got strength. He's got determination. He's got a bit of grit. He's got a bit of a nasty side to his game is what I could see. He's a little bit of nasty side. And I absolutely love that. Um, and he's a keen eye for goal as well. And being played out of position most of the season, I mean, they've relied on him for goals and he's delivered for shells. So Jack Moylan, you've got to be in my team. Now, this one for me was really tight. It's a centre forward spot. Um, you could have tossed a coin between these two. Um, you've obviously got Jonathan Afalabi, or you've got Keaton of um, Cork City. You could have tossed a coin for these two, but I have gone with Jonathan Afalabi. Um, you can't leave the division's top scorer out the side. You just can't. Um, the stats also show that Jonathan Afalabi uh, has contributed more ever so slightly, uh, and he's been ever so more. As the stats show, I'll put him up here now. Uh, as the stats show, he's more likely to score in each game than Keaton as well. Um, he's got more assists. He's got five assists. Keaton's got three. I mean, this being said, you would expect Jonathan Afalabi to have more chances in front of goal because of the team he's playing in. I mean, you've got play many a player who create chances for you in that midfield for Bose. And Keaton, sometimes it feels like he's winning games on his own. Uh, he, he got him into the semi-finals of the Cup, Keaton, um, through that last-minute winner. Uh, and I was very tempted to put him in that side, but you can't leave out the division's top scorer, as I said. So Jonathan Afalabi, you make the last spot in my team of the season. As you see here, here's my team. Um, it's a solid side. I think I think you might be title challengers if you stuck that team together. Um, all we're missing now is a manager. So I put them on the screen here, the four that I would have chosen between. So you've got John Daly, You've got Stephen Bradley, 
you've got Damien Duff and you've got Kevin Doherty. Yeah, again, any of those four, fantastic season they've had. Um, all four of them. I mean, Stephen Bradley's obviously won four in a row for Rovers. Um, unbelievable achievement. Uh, you've got Damien Duff, who's got shells into Europe, which you wouldn't imagined at the beginning of the season. Fantastic achievement. Uh, Kevin Doherty, I mean, he's been absolutely fantastic for Gerrard and to be in the position they are, brilliant. He's getting he's getting the best out of the likes of Kyle Robinson, um, Dale Rooney, fantastic. Um, but the manager that I am going to go for is John Daly. He's got Pats into a, a super strong position in terms of the league and they won the cup. But not only that, he's used the U system at Pats um, and they have one of the youngest sides in the division. I mean, the the partnerships across the pitch that he's created as well with Linus, Redman and Norman at the back. Then you've got Kurtz and Doyle out right. You've got one of the strongest midfield three in Forrester, Lennon and Murphy playing as well, or even Levy as well, as you see in the cup final. Um, partnerships are not created through the players themselves necessarily, but there's got to be a certain amount of coaching and 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 style of play that gets these partnerships on the pitch. And John Daly's worked wonders in that respect. Um, I wouldn't rule out a title charge for Pats next season if they can get the right players in, bolster the squad a little bit more, maybe get that centre forward, like maybe even go out for Keating. Um, go and get that centre forward is going to get your goals. Um, it won't, I wouldn't put it past them to go for a title charge if they can hold this squad together. So John Daly, he's made my manager of the season. Guys, as ever, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, let me know your thoughts and comments. I really want to hear what you think. Um, I know a lot of you are going to have different observations than what I've had, especially with the likes of Diallo making it in the middle. So please tell me what you think. Uh, I'd love to hear it. Um, the more comments, the better. Uh, the more likes, obviously, the better. It helps with the algorithm of the video. So if you have enjoyed it, please make sure you've liked it. Please make sure you comment. Uh, and obviously, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification to make sure that you're not missing any of the content that I deliver over the coming weeks. Thank you very much for tuning in. I've been Jack Sabini. This has been the League of Irish Ball. Ta-da. <laughs>